going on, folks? And we're back. And this is going to be the last segment for the show. And before I let you guys go, I kind of wanted to jump on the soapbox about something that I came across on Vice News. Um, it was an article that was titled, A Quiet Week for Mass Shootings in America is Still More Violent Than Europe. And I've been doing this, this gun debate thing for quite some time now. Um, but recently, I've started working on a series about the violence in the inner cities. Um, as part of a commentator series, essentially. And I've done a couple of videos talking about the subject, but the problem is, is the problem is complex. And thus, I don't think you can necessarily capture everything that you want to in one video. So I decided to do a video series about it. So um, take a look at this clip just to kind of get an idea of what this journey is going to feel like. And all these anti-gun politicians have to offer is gun control. And then when that doesn't work, more gun control. You politicians don't represent these communities. You're political parasites, where your political career thrives on exploiting the conditions in these places. Because if you were trying to save lives, you'd be having a national day of action to demonstrate ways to stop the gang violence in the inner city. Not how to come up with more laws that haven't worked and that you don't enforce in the first place. Like, is this a joke? On one end, you're okay with releasing thousands of felons back on the street early. But then as a solution to the crime and violence perpetrated by these same felons, you want more laws to make what's already illegal more illegal so you can arrest more people just to give them an early release again. You need people like me, a gun owner and NRA member, so you can point your finger and say, that's the bad guy. People like him are why there's so much violence in the inner city, not because Illinois Democrats have failed to improve an education system that functions more like a halfway house than a learning institution. <sighs> so in reading this article, and, and if you can see, I'm, I'm frustrated because we do the same song and dance all the time. Um, they love, and when I say they, I mean the anti-gunners and people who are proponents or pushing for gun control in our political scene and, and the media as well. They love, love to push this narrative where they compare us to other countries, um, especially Europe, as if Europe is this shining, shining beacon of what we're supposed to be as a country. And in this article, you have this individual by the name of Mark Hay who analogizes our, our mass shootings in our country and compares them to the ones in Europe and then basically says, um, even on our best day, it's four times worse than what happens in Europe. And, and in his discussion of the mass shootings that happened in this country, I noticed something in particular that was interesting. He started lumping a lot of what we consider to be gang violence that typically take place in our inner cities as mass shootings. And for some people, they can see that as not necessarily being a problem because they say, well, what, what's the big deal? We, uh, if, if it's a mass shooting that takes place at a school or takes place at... Um, uh, at a shopping mall or mall some that, of that sort. What's the difference between that happening there and, and, the, and then the, the scores of shootings that happen in the inner cities? Um, and, there, and I have to say, there's a huge difference between mass shootings, as we stereotypically understand them to be, and gang violence. And when you talk about mass shootings, the reason why people are so terrified about mass shootings is because mass shootings are inherent. You, you can't plan them. They're random. And you, you can't really control them. You can't brace for them. Think about them. They're like tornadoes. Um, you don't see them coming until they're there. And then they usually happen in places where you don't expect them to happen. As opposed to gang violence, which actually follows a basic pattern um, that's a relegate, that, that, that is um, a result of a particular set of circumstances in an environment. We know where most of the gang violence takes place because they usually happen in places where there's a, a, a lack of, um, where there's abject poverty. The education system is garbage in many of these places. Um, there's, there's a lack of opportunity. And then there's, just a, there's a cycle that perpetuates a certain percentage of the population in these places to engage in this violence. We know where they are. We know where it happens. We know who the people who are doing these are. So no, they're not the same as mass, as mass shootings. They're totally different because the circumstances are different. So I've been doing this for some time now. And, and I remember when I first started doing it, they would throw this, this statistic that 30,000 people, 30,000 people die every year from gun violence. And it was deceptive. And it was deceptive because they didn't give you the whole picture. To somebody who didn't follow the conversation, they hear that statistic and it's startling. It's a lot of people. That was until we exposed it. 
and let them know that, wait a minute now, of that 30,000, over 60% of those are suicides. And not that suicides don't matter, but when we put things into perspective, when we start wanting to compare ourselves to Europe and other countries, our suicide rate per capita is pretty much on par with every other country out there, especially Europe. So it begs the question, are guns really the problem when we still have the same suicide problem that Europe has and they don't have the number of guns that we have? So then on top of that, what you have left from that is mass shootings. And mass shootings may account for almost a, a statistical zero in terms of representing the number of people killed by guns every year in this country. So what are you left with? You're then left with accidents. That's about 5%. And of that 5%, I honestly believe with just the right education, just educating people on firearm safety, that alone would cut that number in half. So the remaining number of, of gun deaths in this country that we have are actual homicides. And uh, unfortunately, a vast majority of those happen in what I call the inner city. Um, not that everybody in the inner city is engaging in this violence. The funny thing about it is when we start talking about places like Chicago, it's not even all of Chicago that's this violent. And then it's, it's very specific places in Chicago that result in this violence. But then even then, even in these inner city communities, it's only a very small percentage of the people in these communities who are engaging in most of the violence in these communities. Because most of the people there are good people. They're just not wealthy. It's the only difference. So I, I find it almost disgusting now that now that they've been exposed and we demonstrated that this 30,000 deaths every year from gun violence statistic was misleading. Now they want to start incorporating the deaths that are happening from the inner city and throwing those into, in, into the stats as well. But years ago, you weren't even paying attention to them. Unless somebody walked into a school in a suburban area or walked into a mall in a suburban area and shot up a bunch of people randomly, we weren't even talking about the deaths that were going on in this country. That's because it didn't affect you. And since it didn't affect you, all you did was you took the dead bodies that you were getting in the inner cities and lumped them in to the rest of the numbers that you got from mass shootings because you couldn't do it on mass shootings alone because they were statistical zero. So now you use the deaths in the inner city to scare suburban housewives to want to have more gun control because you, uh, you make it seem as if the numbers that we have are all from mass shootings. And then you take the deaths that are happening in the inner city and say, oh, well, those are mass shootings too, but they're not. Most of the people who are pushing for gun control, um, these political leaders, are the same leaders of these communities and have been for decades. They're the ones responsible for the situations that are going on in the inner city from the standpoint that they completely neglect them. They've been leading these communities, and every single time their answer is more gun control, more gun control. But yet these cities are still in the same downtrodden, horrible conditions that they are today. There's nothing more disrespectful than looking at somebody in the eye who doesn't have the ability to get a job, who has to deal with the violence in their city, and then has gun control measures that tell them that they can't own a gun in a particular environment when they're probably in the, in the position to need it the most, to look at them and then say, you know what, we need to have universal background checks. Because the violence in the inner city, that's how we're going to stop it. Universal background checks. And not, not only that, they also uh, proffer up the notion of uh, uh, assault weapons ban, that somehow restricting semi-automatic rifles is going to cure the conditions that are going on in our inner cities. It's disrespectful. The problem is you don't really want to deal with the issue. You want the easy route. You want to be able to stand on gun control and say, well, look, I passed this piece of legislation and I made it all better. No, they're not better. They're still living in the same conditions. Kids are still going to schools that function like halfway houses. It's a joke. And every single time they do this, and, it's, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. So that's why I've embarked on my series with the commentators in dealing with the inner city violence. So I hope you guys pay attention to that. And hopefully I can get across everything that I want to get across with this series. With that being said, this is going to be the end of seeing live for Monday. Please join us again tomorrow. And like I said before, you can watch seeing live every day from Monday through Thursday, four to five o'clock central time. Like I said, if you're going to go out and get a device to watch the show, I, I'm, I employ you just get it on Apple TV too. Just, just do that for me because the, the viewing experience is going to be 10 times better than it will be on Roku. You can still watch it on Roku. It will be just fine. But if you're going to go out and get something to watch it, get Apple TV too. With that being said, you can also watch it on, C, um, <laughs> you can also watch it on NRATV.com as well. So with that being said, I'm Colin Noir. This has been CN Live, and I'm out.